short interval control. Anytime we have a process or processes where we are producing something for a customer, we want to make sure we can ensure quality. We want to make sure that we meet customers' expectations and we give them the experience they're looking for. It doesn't matter if it's a, a recipe in a restaurant or a product that we're manufacturing in a manufacturing facility. What we're always looking for are processes that are capable, repeatable, and reliable. What does that mean? Okay, let's look at capable first. For a process to be capable, let's say we have our process measurements here, and in this we have our upper limit and our lower limit. What we want whenever we're measuring any of the products or looking at variation, we want everything right in the center. Then we have a very robust process, and even if we have variation, we know we're well within tolerances, and so we can meet customer expectations. That's what it means to be capable. Are the processes capable of meeting customer expectations? Repeatable. When we have that, is that process stable? Can we continue to count on that? Is it repeatable? Um, if it only runs in center specification when everything is just perfect, there's probably going to be a problem there because things are rarely perfect. But we need control over, say, the equipment and supplies where we have predictability that it's going to be repeatable. It, we can hold that uh, specification. What does it mean to be reliable? Okay, let's say we have a process that's capable, it's well within customer tolerances, and it's repeatable. But you know what? That equipment is prone to break down. For every 10 hours it's supposed to run, it only runs 9 hours. You know, or because of the materials we run into it, it's prone to jamming. So it's not reliable. So we're always looking for processes that are capable, repeatable, and reliable. Okay, short inter interval control is one way to ensure that. Um, if you go back to, uh, say, the old days in sailing ships, which is where the concept came from, let's say we have an island here and we have an island here and we have our ship that's sailing from here to this island well before GPS and, and modern navigation rarely would they be able to go straight from one to the other if you watch their pattern what you'd see is this constantly course correcting so always looking at their navigation tools to make sure that they were heading the right way. They were checking on short intervals to ensure they didn't do this. Go a long way out of their way and then have to do a major course correction, which could be days off course. So with that short interval control where we're looking for repeatable, reliable, and capable, what we're doing is we're looking at our processes on, on a regular basis to ensure quality. And we're doing it at short intervals. So how short should those intervals be? You're going to determine that based on the real robustness and history of that process. So you'll determine, do you need to check the process for quality, do measurements every 30 minutes, every hour, every four hours, every six hours? And what's the motivation or benefit to the employee to be involved in short interval control? So let's look at that. Again, there's always got to be a benefit to the employee. You know, if not, again, why do it? We don't want to do something simply because we're told we have to. We want to see a benefit. Okay, let's get rid of our islands here. Okay, for any process where you're looking at mainly one attribute, short interval control is great. It'd be like navigating between those islands. They were looking at one attribute, and that's, are we on course? So, uh, again, for one continuum, if you're looking at just measuring one, one characteristic, height, weight, temperature, anything like that, again, short interval control is great. And you can use it for cross attributes for different but um, again, for, for one thing, it works really great, and here's or one characteristic, and here's why. What you want to do is design a template, uh, a, a sheet to use for your short interval control, a short interval control chart. Uh, often these are referred to as a sick chart. And on these, what's good to use is set up a graph. So we have our upper 
and our lower limit and all you're having the employee do is when they measure again all they're doing is putting a dot where that measurement is so picture this is turning into a run chart say every 30 minutes or every 60 minutes they're measuring diameters on something then they just put their dot wherever it is on that graph every 30 minutes or every hour they put another dot now here's the motivation for them to do this what we do not ever want is to find out that we've been running out of spec in some way for a long period of time and you know have to deal with a bunch of scrap another thing we don't want to deal with is one person fighting a problem for a long period of time without getting help that's the main benefit for short interval control uh, for the person that's actually doing the work of, of doing the checks and, and putting the dots on the graph and here's what I mean most of us do not like asking for help we don't like doing that we don't like bothering our boss or calling support or, or anything like that you know we'd rather maintain control and, and not raise a, a flag but if you're doing short interval controls okay I'm the the worker and I'm doing my measurements I put on my on my graph now the next level person in leadership often a lead mechanic or um, whoever the person is that, that would be responsible yeah, I'm responsible for doing it, but who's accountable to make sure everything is, is happening the way it should be? That person looks at my chart. Hey, Brian, I see that, you know what? You're starting to climb up here towards the upper limit. What's causing it? And immediately, I've got support from them. We might put a game plan together, start looking at the, some things. And again, now I'm, not, I'm no longer facing this problem alone. I've got someone helping me. That's the main purpose of short interval control in terms of benefits to me. So I'm graphing every, say, 30 minutes, every hour, or whatever. I'm putting my information down. Now my lead mechanic knows that we're heading towards the upper limits. So we've got the next step that you want to tie to this is something called an escalation model. If you're familiar with um, Toyota, the Toyota production sh system, and their Andon cord, which ran the full length of the uh, assembly line, where there's a problem, they pull the Andon. Well, the escalation model just gives us steps to take. Where, say, when we start heading out there, say I have one plot that's near that upper, upper line, you know, my uh, lead mechanic steps in, we put together a plan. You know, in that first, say, hour or whatever, or you can base usually your escalation models on anything from downtime, scrap rate, um, where you're getting on here, so many dots towards this close to the upper limit, here's what we want to do. The next step with a lead mechanic might be to contact an engineer or to contact a department manager. But your escalation model should state steps again based on certain levels so you're going to contact these people. So now I'm not calling for help. I'm just following the plan. You know, it says to do this, so I'm doing it. And it's not just me, the lead mechanics getting involved and maybe an engineer and so forth and so forth. The whole purpose, again, is to keep our processes uh, reliable, repeatable, and capable. We want to eliminate variation that the customer would feel. And we don't want to send anything, any quality issues downstream. So again, short inter interval control is a great, great way to ensure quality. Now remember that this time doing these checks is actually non-value added time. Again, if we look at everything from is it value added or non-value added, for something to be value added, remember it's got to meet three criteria. It's got to be something that the customer is willing to pay for, something that's done right the first time, and it's got to change the form or function of the product in some way. This doesn't meet those criteria. Um, the customer doesn't care that we have to do this or how much time we have to spend tweaking. They just want good quality product. And we need to build quality into it, not wait till the end and do quality checks. So this is truly non-value added. We're just trying to ensure quality. This is something we have to do to ensure it. The goal would be to get such a robust process where it's reliable, capable, and repeatable, and we don't need to do this. That way, our employees are free up to do more creative pursuits of driving improvement, not just ensuring quality. So one goal would be possibly to automate this process, 
to where we have vision systems or something along that line. And when it starts creeping up, it gives us a light or lets us know, waves a hand saying, hey, we got a problem here. That's more respectful to the worker. worker. Again, short interval control, just like that navigation tool, you know, heading between the islands. We've got a process where it's not fully repeatable, reliable, or capable. So we've got to stay on it. We've got to determine how often we need to check it, you know, every 30 minutes, every hour, every four hours. Then we need to make sure that, say, our lead mechanic or that next level up is also coming and checking our cart or our, our, our chart. If I'm harvesting the information again, we want someone looking at it, otherwise it does no good. So I'm putting this information up there and he's looking at it. We've got our escalation model. And again, gives us a, a nice format to ensure quality. Now, we're not just shooting from the hip. Okay, now if we're using short interval control, why not get the most out of our time? So if we're harvesting information, looking to use this to make our processes more robust, again, repeatable, reliable, capable, what we might want to do with this form is we've got our graph where they're plotting the information, their continuum, creating the run chart. But on the bottom of it, under the graph, what we might want to do is create a notes section. And when there's abnormalities, they can capture that information. So we would want to use something called the four C's. The four C's are, and we create, say, a line for each one, and they're concern, cause, countermeasure, and check. So we run into a problem up here, and they write down the concern. You know, I, I think it's this. You know, we're running into this issue. By doing a little root cause analysis, asking, say, the five whys, or doing a little bit of, of work trying to figure out for sure what that problem is, then we'd write down the cause. Okay, here's the, the root cause based on our analysis. Here's what we found. So then we put in our countermeasure. We write that as that third C. Here's what we put in place. So problem, here's our solution. And that fourth C is just we're going to check on it with time and make sure that that was the solution. If we do that and it works out, then we'll create an OCAP, an out of control action plan. So that now in the future when a problem arises like that again, we can go right to that solution. Here's what we need to do. So again, we want standard work for everything, standard work for setting up the equipment for all our processes. And these are what enable success on the behalf of the person that's engaged in the activity. And so again, when they run into this problem, here's what you do. Once again, short interval control are, uh, is a great tool, but it's non-value added. So again, the goal is actually to minimize the amount of time spent doing this by either automation, automation or making our processes so robust it's not necessary and having good quality checks. With our, uh, a lot of the equipment that, uh, we, that I was involved with as a mechanic working with Philips, we had vision systems and a lot of this automated. It started out as doing a lot of process checks, but uh, slowly we were able to automate a lot of it and free up employees for, again, more value-added pursuits, driving improvements. Um, so hopefully that gives you some good information there on short interval control. Again, the idea is if you've got something that's prone to variation, we want to ensure quality and we'll also be able to harvest some good information that we can use to make it a more robust process in the future. And this is also tied to escalation model. Remember the benefit for me is as I'm collecting this information, uh, the next person that uh, say I'm responsible to is looking at this and he's going to bring in the cavalry whenever I get into trouble. I don't have to pull the end on. It's kind of built into the system. He'll do it for me. We'll get a hold of the engineer and the department head and the manager. And, you know, all that will happen is just the due course of protecting this process. So it's a good setup. So again, uh, if you've never tried short interval control, again, I, I highly recommend it. I highly recommend it for controlling processes that are prone to variation.